I'll have to be honest with you. First thing I'm going to mention right up front is, is it's free. Uh, I, I like this, this, this service when, when it's free because, you know, you can tie up a lot of money in, in different services. And from experience, I found out that a, you, sometimes you can pay a lot of money and you, you may not be getting that much out of it. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. It's February 4th, 2014. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Brock Shimano to help break down a very positive day for the grains on a Tuesday. Jumping into the quotes here, you can see corn up six, soybeans up 20 and a half cents, Chicago wheat uh, getting in on the action up 20 and three quarters, Kansas City wheat up 22 and a quarter. As I said, Brock, a very positive day today for the grains. We had weather in South America and here in the U.S. supporting markets. One of the big early stories, though, was the numbers out from Informa, uh, specifically about that South American crop. Yeah, they did release their most uh, recent projections for the South American production. If you take a look at the slide here, the Brazilian corn uh, got moved lower by 1 million metric tons. Uh, Brazilian soybeans got moved uh, just a little bit higher by about 1 million metric tons there. Uh, Argentina corn moved lower by about 2.4 million metric tons, and Argentina soybeans uh, moved lower by just a half a million metric tons. Yep. So not a, not big revisions here. I think the corn numbers were slightly supportive of the corn market here today uh, soybean market or the soybean number was only about a half a million uh, million metric ton difference between uh, uh, the gains in Brazil and the losses in Argentina right. so not a big story for soybeans uh, but you know just take a look at the price action here today I think uh, you know corn was supported uh, we hit the highest point since November of 12 uh, so the long-term high there uh, soybeans the highest point we've had since January 17th and wheat the highest points we've had since January 9th so um, you know we've had a substantial rally here over the last three or four days in all three markets and uh, if I was a producer out there holding on to some old crop corn, old crop soybeans, might be taking a look at uh, some of your local cash markets make a sale. Yeah, you know, one thing in particular that was really helping out the soybean market and corn to some degree was the weather in South America continues to still be very hot and dry. Take a look here at this map provided by Planalytics. As you can see here, the area that people are really concerned about is the southern growing region in Brazil and the northern growing regions uh, of Argentina where the soybeans are still in the pod fill stage. You can see that 36 degrees Celsius was pretty prominent across southern, uh, uh, southern Brazil and northern Argentina. That's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit so far from ideal pod filling uh, conditions there. That seemed to be really helping out the soybean market, showing continued strength here both on the old crop and to a degree on new crop here today. As I said, though, during the introduction, Brock, it seems like here in the U.S. we're having an exceptional cold front. Uh, and that seemed to be helping out wheat in some ways. Yeah, we definitely have a deep freeze going on in much of the growing areas for the winter wheat. Uh, if you take a look down into Kansas, Nebraska, uh, even in parts of Oklahoma and in, in, into Texas, we're going to have very substantially cold weather uh, down in the negative temperatures all the way down into Kansas. Uh, Oklahoma should be down in the single digits in Texas as well. Uh, so really there's a concern right now for some winter kill scenarios for the winter wheat crop uh, that's about ready to come out of dormancy in some of those southern parts. So yeah. it's, it's going to be important to watch this, see how how this pans out over the next couple of days. Looks like the temperatures are, remain very cold out until uh, Friday later on this week. Yeah, you know, in general though, Brock, I do agree with you. I think that these rallies should be sold into. We're still in general uh, in the midst of a very large bear market. We still have very large ending stocks, particularly for corn. So I'll be taking a look at that here closely over the next couple of days. A couple items that are going to be uh, dictating trade action for the remainder of the week. Tomorrow we'll get out EIA ethanol numbers. Thursday we'll get export sales numbers and we'll be breaking both those down here on Grain TV. As always, please keep in mind we have a great new mobile trading app now available on iPhone, iPad, Android, or tablet. Visit us over at GrainHedge.com to take a trial for yourself there. Or as always, call us at the office, 877-472-4607. Thanks a lot for joining us here on a very positive Tuesday in the Grains. We'll see you tomorrow.